Hi, welcome to my latest podcast. I'm John Podlaski, author, administrator of the Cherries Vietnam War website. In my last podcast, I focused on the infantry soldier, what we carried and what it was like for us to hump the boonies. We quickly learned how difficult it was going to be for us to search for the enemy through thick jungles while carrying 70 plus pounds of supplies on our back. The temperature and humidity during the day were both near 100 and always felt like we were walking through the largest sauna in the world. Today I want to talk more about another fear we had to overcome while living in the jungles. Over time, Mother Nature created many wonderful things, some beautiful, others downright frightening. It didn't take us long to learn that these Vietnam jungles were home to every creature, beast, and insect known to man. So join me on this short podcast and we'll take a look at some of those gifts that Mother Nature bestowed upon us while humping the boonies. Some veterans swore to seeing tigers and elephants in the boonies, but I have to admit I haven't seen either in the year that I spent there. What we did see though during our tours were many wild boars, cobras, small and deadly viper snakes, lots of different spiders, a few boa constrictors, and some pythons. Someone once said that Vietnam was home to 100 different species of snakes, 98 being poisonous and the other two could crush a person to death. Tarantulas were everywhere, as were dozens of other species of spiders some of them the size of dinner plates. We ran across red ants, turnamites, and black horse flies on patrols. It all hurt like hell when they bit us. We swatted at bees, wasps, hornets, and then found centipedes and millipedes crawling up our legs during our breaks. Lizards scurried about, Rats pounced, scorpions circled around us, and land and water leeches were everywhere. That's right, there were two different types of leeches in a jungle. Water leeches, which are located in any body of water. I'm sure everybody's aware of them. But what about the land leeches? What do you know about them? These little buggers moved around on leaves and over the ground like a pack of maggots. Their mouths always search for something to attach to. When traveling through areas where they were abundant, many of them hooked up with unaware soldiers when passing through. Once finding the bare flesh, they began gorging on blood until they got full and fell away. Rock apes were territorial and screeched loudly. Sometimes they attacked the soldiers with rocks or other foreign objects when we entered into their domain. Orangutans, spider monkeys, and bats were also noisy when disrupted. Their chatter and activity often gave away our position and forced us to move to a new location. As soon as it got dark, the hordes of mosquitoes suddenly filled the air and began attacking anything warm-blooded. The bug juice which the army gave us kept many of the flying insects from landing on bare skin, but did nothing to prevent those long beak malaria carrying insects from biting you through your clothes. I'd try to cover my head at night with a poncho liner to keep the mosquitoes away, but it was soon hot and uncomfortable. Besides, there was no escaping the constant buzzing in your ears as the bloodthirsty swarms hovered overhead, waiting patiently for a bare spot to show. I purposely put in this empty slide to give you a feel for what it was like at night in a jungle. Imagine, if you will, laying in a blackness and then feeling something moving across your body. There were no lights to turn on and we certainly wouldn't use flashlights or flame up our lighters to investigate. 
knowing full well that any light in the dark jungle was like turning on a beacon for those who were searching for us and wanted to kill us. It was a game of chance. You might try to swat, brush, or jump up from the ground, or if you had nerves of steel, you simply let it be. Most of the time we were paralyzed, frozen in place with fear, too afraid to even open our eyes. Many of us prayed for daylight, which was still hours away. Some of these creatures had claws or other devices that held onto you. So swatting at them only pissed them off and resulted in a retaliatory bite, sting, or painful pinch. Most of what I already showed you on the slides are venomous and could make us feel very sick or even kill. A small banded crake like what you see in the center photo once bit me and I went into convulsions within 15 minutes. I was quickly medevac from the jungle to the hospital where the doctor told me that if I'd stayed in the bush, I wouldn't have woken up the next morning. Someone once said that what you can't see won't hurt you. I don't believe that one bit. Without knowing for sure what things are, imaginations would kick in and the experience would just wipe you out both mentally and emotionally. The night was like a terrible nightmare, the pitch blackness limiting visibility to only a foot. Our bed was the jungle floor where sharp twigs, roots, and stones jabbed at us all through the night, jarring us awake each time we shifted around or turned over. Sleeping in a hammock wasn't a guarantee either of getting a restful night's sleep. Anything on the ground could climb trees and would find a way to get to you. The monsoon rains kept many of the flying insects at bay, but the nightly downpours just added to our misery. Each of us still had to take two hour turns on guard duty and radio watch. We knew the enemy was out there somewhere looking for us, and every shadow, be it the leaves and branches moving during a short breeze, or the moonlight filtering through the canopy and then dancing across the foliage. All this told our brains that something was moving around out there. Before it got dark, we also had to memorize the path to our central watch area, and then from there to our, where our replacement slept, and then finally getting back to our own sleeping area. That too was a crapshoot because you weren't aware if anything took over your sleep area while you were gone. So lying back down was a risk, but as tired as we were, many of us really didn't care one way or another. One consolation was that eventually the many sleep deprived nights caught up to us and we found that we could just fall asleep anywhere, even standing up. These creatures were always found in the damnedest of places every morning. We'd find them in our pockets, boots, helmet, rucksack, canteen cut, or even laying under the warmth of our lightweight poncho liner, snuggling up close. A thorough search and destroy effort was usually the first thing on the agenda every morning. But we had no choice but to endure. How would you have handled this? Thank you for joining me in this presentation. There'll be more to come. Watch out for them. Thank you again. Bye.